All right, we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome back to this episode of the Road to Redemption podcast. How are you guys? Good to see you. Uh, it has not been a week, technically. If you look back there, I uploaded the YouTube video five days ago. Uh, but it's Labor Day. I was trying to give you guys uh, time to enjoy your families. I was trying to enjoy my family, which I've been doing. And tonight we have Notre Dame football kickoff. I haven't, uh, maybe it's because I've been waiting to get the podcast out of the way. I've had the podcast on my mind all week long. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing that I just, I need to get this out, whatever this is going to be. I have no plan for this show. I have no plan for this episode. I just truly, I've had a lot on my mind. Everything that I've been thinking this week, uh, literally almost everything. I'm like, I can't wait to talk about this on the podcast. I can't wait to share it. Um, I have a really bad habit of when I have these thoughts that I want to share, I'm either in the shower or, or I'm driving, where I cannot physically write them down um, in my phone, which I am live for the first time on IG, what's up, while I'm recording the podcast live, so you guys are catching a little bit of it, you guys are just kind of catching the intro right now, um, but yeah, figured I'd try that out, while Instagram's looking at YouTube, YouTube looking at Instagram, whoa. If I break a fourth wall and you guys time travel, let me know. Um, anyway, I've been thinking a lot about life, sure, um, and life's purpose, and what purpose do I serve here on this, on this world, and what, what is, what does it mean to really, truly make an impact on people's lives in 2019? I have known my entire life that somehow, some way, I wanted to entertain people for my career. Whatever, whatever you want to call it, job, career, nine to five, whatever you want to call it, I knew I wanted to provide for my family by entertaining other human beings. Uh, in specific, I like to make people laugh. Um, that's more me as a person. That doesn't necessarily have to make mean I have to make my career about that. Sometimes that's important for us to know. Just because we have a good quality or a skill in something, that doesn't necessarily mean that has to be what we turn our career into, right? I can tell you from experience that there have been a few times in my life where I've tried to turn hobbies and passions into careers and it kills it as a hobby and passion for me. I realized I didn't love it that much. And for that, I'll encourage you. If you think you really love something, try to turn it into a business. Because the effort and the dedication and the commitment that it takes, dedication and commitment are the same things. Bing, gotcha before you can get me. Before you can like down my YouTube shit. Gotcha, haters. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... I... I have been struggling the most this week um, in the entertainment field of while my brand continues to grow, uh, I almost said brand expand, I didn't want to rhyme on you guys, um, as my brand continues to grow and as things begin to happen, I feel that this all becomes more of a business, which I like, right? That's fine. That's always been the plan. I've talked about that. At the same point, I struggle with authenticity in a sense, not like you may think. I struggle with authenticity in the sense of I will only be authentic to me. And I don't believe in like false advertising. And when I say false advertising, I don't mean promising you one thing. And then um, switching it when you've, you know, bought the thing, you find out it's not what you thought it was. That's not what I'm talking about. False advertising for me, right? I personally, as a human being, as a man, I love marketing and I love sales. Now, what do I mean by that? I love being able to help a human being find a product or a service that fixes a problem in their lives or makes them feel better in some way about themselves. I like that, right? I like being able to provide that for people. And yes, oftentimes in sales positions, the money is good, right? Here's what I don't like. As much as I've known um, 
my entire life, business to be and sales to be always morally and ethically blurred or skewed, right? It's always, and we've gotten worse as time goes, where we blur these lines between moral and where we're not lying to people, but we're not really being genuine or authentic either. Perfect example, right? Brand ambassadors for um, companies on social media, which we have back behind us here. I am, have been, and um, I don't think I'm technically an ambassador for anybody right now. I'm sponsored by everybody that I work with, which is great. I, I love every company I work with, and I'll talk about them in all this in retrospect here in a minute. But like, okay, so a social media ambassador, right? A social media ambassador is told, usually, by an ambassador, ambassador program manager or an influencer manager or a, whatever they call them, a uh, street team manager, whatever, they're usually managed by one of them. They're told upon taking the ambassadorship, they're to post once a week in their, on their feed and in their timeline. They're to use certain hashtags. So most people will tell you that you have to put the at and then the company name in your bio, and then they promise you the world, right? 10% uh, off or 10% commission. They give uh, your followers 20% code to use. And then realistically, unless you have somewhere around the gauge of like 20 to 50,000 followers, you're not getting that many link clicks unless you're in a very, very specific niche market or you're a well-respected woman who is not just hawking the next thing. Um, people can tell. Guys have a really hard time. Guys have a really, really hard time with this. Let me make sure I actually record this. Um, guys have a hard time, right? Because guys are automatically kind of seen as sleazy on social media. Guys, and we've done enough to earn that badge, I think. Uh, guys are seen as sleazy to begin with. So when a dude sees another dude talking about, hey, man, buy my supplements, eh, right? already eh eh like more than likely every dude if we're being honest feels some type of way about another guy right even his buddies every guy is always kind of measuring up other dudes so if you now unless you're like best friends right if you're best friends obviously you're not being a dick to them but like if you're even my best friends though they'll tell me like hey man i got this pre-workout back when we were deployed it was always hey man i just got this new pre-workout you want to try it and it's like no dude it's just not it's not strong enough or you know whatever you always try to protect your thing whatever you think is cool guys especially like to hold on to this knucklehead thing of like shit we think is cool and we will protect it like everything we we act like people are coming to take our shit all the time um, and then women, it's harder to market, I think, because sex sells and sex always will sell. So that's what they want to see in most cases on social media um, or just the genuine attractiveness of the woman physical being is used. It's very easy to market that. It's been used for years. Uh, why do I bring all this up? In my show, um, I, you know, I market for quite a few companies, and while I sit in the shower and I drive to work, I think about it, and I struggle with it, genuinely struggle with it, because it's everything I've ever wanted, it's everything I've worked for, and it's everything that I never thought it would be. On the road to redemption, the road to redemption is now something much more than what I ever thought it could or would be. Uh, that has nothing to do with me. That has everything to do with you guys. I simply walk in my spare bedroom, flip on a few lights and a few switches, and I start talking. Everything else is because of you guys. Uh, and I'm going to try really hard not to get emotional, but because that 
is the case and that is my reality for everyone watching. If anyone is watching on Instagram, I thank you so much for being here. Uh, because of that, I'm, I'm very protective of who gets access to you guys uh, and who gets to talk to you guys and who gets to gain your attention. I tell you all the time to protect what, uh, what, what gets your attention and I am very selective as to who gets that while you're choosing to spend your attention on me in my shows, in my outlets. So, because of that, you guys will hear ads, you guys will see on my Instagram, you will see sponsored posts, you will see stuff like that. I promise you, with everything in my heart, I will never join a company that I don't like their shit. That's a promise. I will never team up with a company who I have not looked into and at least found um, that they are people to be trusted um, in business as far as I can tell. Obviously, I'm not a part of all of their corporate offices or anything. Um, but they treat people right and genuinely I think they care about people, you know. Uh, and then lastly, nobody gets to talk for me. And nobody gets to talk for us. So be very clear right now when I say I have teamed up with quite a few great companies. But no one speaks for me. No company will ever say, oh, well, Cam said, uh, maybe. If they're saying a testimony of a product, maybe. But unless you hear it come from me, ask me. Right? Um, other than that, you guys can know that I vetted the companies that I work with and that I will never just be a social media ambassador going, here's my new supplement. Take this because it is good. And all I'm really doing is hoping you use the code so that way I can rationalize my. Guys, I don't need that. Right? I have analytics that show, you know, everything that I do and what, what this group is capable of, right? I want to tell you first and foremost, you guys don't know anybody. Shit. Myself included. So let me be very clear about that. <clears throat> as much as I love the companies that I work with, you guys don't owe them anything, and you don't owe me anything. In the same regard, if you choose to buy something and support them, right, they don't owe you anything, except for the product that you paid for and customer service, obviously. But at the same regard, I, I don't like it, and I see it a lot. Um, I see people go, well, you know, I used Cam's code, and I just thought maybe, you know, maybe I'd, you know, maybe I'd get... No, motherfucker, don't be cheap with it. Like, people forget they gave discount codes in the beginning to, to customers as a thank you, as an appreciation for being a customer. Ambassadors have fucked that up, right? Now, people don't, people almost reject discounts at this point. If you walk into a Kroger and they're like, you want 10% off that can of peaches? They're like, nah, dog, because I'm not trying to sign up for your fucking mailing list and then subscribe to your YouTube channel. I ain't got time for it. I'm really just trying to buy my fucking pants on Amazon and get the fuck out of here. I don't need a discount code for everything. Here's the fact. I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I, I get it. In the same token, remember one very simple thing. You follow the people you follow for a reason, right? If you follow them, you should support them, right? I, it, it has never, I've never understood why people will watch other human beings for hours. Some of you will watch us on social media and will watch these platforms for hours and hours and hours and hours, probably more than you associate with people in your real life. But you won't support a motherfucker, right? Now, I'm not talking about me. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about you guys do more than enough shit for me. I'm talking about I see people all the time. Now, I'm not saying every person on social media deserves to be supported. But, like, my wife and I were kind of talking about it earlier. Um, people keep posting here in our local community, they keep posting this Amber Alert out. And it's, you know, for people that have seen it, we've seen it for the last, like, two years. 
And so people will always go in and comment, and they will always say the same thing. Ooh, I'm glad I stayed. Check that out. Almost missed the entire thing. Um, they'll always say the, they say the same thing. This is an old post. This is an old story. I don't know why people keep circulating it. Yada, 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 right? Well, hey, that's I would rather always share because even if it's a completely fake story, and that child, you know, is nev has never been missing. It took literally nothing for me to go doink. I would rather look like an asshole for sharing a, a fake story than whatever the point zero 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 one percent chance that the reason I shared that was the reason they were found. I'll take that chance. Sure, I'll take that chance all day long. Cause I would I would hope that if anything had ever happened to one of my kids. Any person who ever even thought of my person would share that, right? Of course. So in the same regard, if you see somebody on Instagram and they're doing something that you respect and they're, they're doing something that's admirable, guess what? Do something that you're going to do anyway, which is screenshot their shit, because you're going to do it anyway about people's stuff to go fucking roast them in a chat room or a text thread, you're going to be like, look at this motherfucker. So let's do this. Find something instead that you support, you find admirable, that motivates you. Screenshot that and repost the shit. Because guess what? Now you're a part of that community. Now you're supporting the thing that inspired you, which will then draw a community to you, which will further inspire you to do what? Change your life because now you're watching people change other people's lives solely because you made one action to support someone else when it had nothing to do with you, right? If anything, we think by sharing something, it costs us our brand on social media because that's so fucking important, right? Wrong. Here's what's ironic. Right? I see it. I've seen it forever. In the almost three and a half years I've been doing this now. I watch people get into social media because they genuinely want to help people. They have good, kind hearts. And I, I know tons of people that have gotten into social media solely because they want to reach out and touch people's lives right where they are now. Then they get their hobby, their thing, their market, their industry, whatever. Then they dive headfirst into that. Now, we lose part one. The part about how I wanted to reach into people's lives and touch them and change their lives, right? That is now, we've, we've watered that down at best. And now, we are fitness people. We are gun people. We are political people. We are parents. We are wine connoisseurs. We are supplement salesmen, hairdressers. We are now brands and we are now billboards, and we are now... Right? Right? Can we all fucking admit that? We're all... on social media right now. And it's not because we have branding and advertising. I love to see shit that people use. I personally love it. I love it. And if I can get a 20% discount by supporting a friend of mine, great! I'm still the same as I was in high school. If I see people that have cool shit on Instagram, I go, how can I get that cool shit? Swipe up. I don't know why people find that so fucking hard. Or like it's a part of your, it takes away from your personal ego to do that. To me, I don't get it. Anywho, on to our next lesson. Don't take yourself so seriously, right? Social media is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, nobody knows. So don't hire anyone for social media um, help. You can ask uh, a few of my clients. I tell them all social media advice is free for me <laughs> um, because you should never hire anyone for, uh, for social media advice because no one fucking knows, right? They could change it tomorrow they, and it could all just be fucked, right? And no one knows. So if you want to be on fucking TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and Grinder and everything else that you crazy ass kids are on now, whatever, go ahead. Let your freak flag fly.
all over the internet. Now I'll tell you. Stop uploading yourselves doing dumb shit, illegal shit, shit in the nude. Or things with people you're not supposed to fucking be around. How about that? Stop uploading yourselves doing dumb shit and putting it on the internet. Why? We just went through this. What was it? What was it? Instagram? Help me out here. Instagram? Somebody write it. I haven't been paying attention. I'm going to go back through here in a second and see if anyone's asked any questions. Um, what was it? A couple weeks ago? A couple weeks ago, we were all holding a, a thing up to our face and it was making us 70 years older. And then immediately, like two days later, people like me came in and squashed the f fun and was like, Hey, by the way, that company's owned by Russia. Quit putting your shit in there. And then everyone's like, oh, we got iPhones. Your shit's been in there forever. Guess what? They're right. Your shit is in there forever. Stop taking pictures of yourself doing shit that you're not supposed to be doing on your iPhone. Why? Why? If you're supposed to see that individual in the nude, then you'll see him later. Stop taking pictures of it. Why? Just for fucking why? How many people, right? Now, it, again, I tell you guys, I have to sit there and watch Fox News at work most times. The amount of people that I see who have sent out a dirty picture, and it's like, you're 50? Let me move. You're 50? Taking pictures of your junk on the internet. Or... You're 29. I'm 27. I'm a father. Some of y'all are parents. You're not going to see each other later. You can't. You can't wait. I can promise you this. This gentleman never done it. Never. Not going to happen. I watched my cousin get burnt by it when I was in high school. So, again, don't be don't take yourself so serious. Keep dumb shit off the internet. Uh, all joking aside, right? I do wanna, I do wanna get serious, especially with my guys. I need to talk to my men here for a minute, right? Got uh, ladies, you can listen in. Maybe try to uh, see if you can debunk something going on in your guy's head, or maybe you can help see him a little differently if you're struggling in an area where maybe you need help understanding what he may be thinking. I'm speaking for me, but I want to talk to my guys for a minute, right? And, and ladies, we'll circle back around. I'll probably even include you in this um, because my wife is included in everything I do. She is everything I do. And uh, again, she is the reason for everything that I do, her and my kids. So uh, women, this is not a disrespect thing when I say I want to talk to my, my guys. So don't leave on me. Um, all right, guys. Men... We are in a strange place, not just in America, I feel like in the world. Men as, as a whole, as a human, men, we are a very complicated, we are a very confused, we are a very emotional, we are a very passionate, driven, ambitious and very powerful being a man right now just as I said that some of you got chills down your arms because you by saying that we are a very powerful being you took that to mean that we are more powerful and I want to stop you right there because men are a very powerful being that does not mean anybody or anyone is any less powerful than we are. I'm only stating the fact that as a human being and as a man, you are a very powerful being. Okay? Now, why do I say that? Men are filled with very natural, primal, and animalistic desires. We have very few of them. They're very simple but they are very strong and we care very passionately about them. We want to mate, so sex, right? We want food, we need water, 
and at some point we're going to have to lay down and rest. All right? Now, sex. You don't need a woman for that, but to mate, you do. To, to re, pre, re uh, I got I got one out there to re. Someone help me with the fucking word. Re not recreate. How am I to have fucking kids? Okay. Somebody YouTube the word that I'm looking for. Somebody help me out in the YouTube. To have fucking kids, male on woman. Right. Don't talk about science to me. I'm not talking about petri dish shit right now. Okay. Man, woman, sex, mating, primal, instinct. Now. When a man lays down, it is scientifically proven if he lays next to, I'll say a loved one for political correctness reasons. When you lay next to someone you love at night while you rest, your body rests better, you recover better, your body is just in a deeper state of relaxation, therefore you rest better. So it's better done with a mate. Two of the however many things I've named off are better done with women. So, what's the other thing? Food. Uh, currently, uh, my wife is a, an amazing cook, and she's constantly looking for ways to help improve my diet. You guys know I have shit cholesterol, right? Uh, and I just sometimes, after a long day, my wife is amazing, and she's already got something pre-planned. The other day I came home, and she had a whole fucking... Baga, what do you call it? Uh, the the things you can leave on forever. I don't know why I'm spacing it right now. We use it all the time. Uh, a crock pot. She had a whole meal done up, and man, it was the works. So again, if you got a good one, now we're on to number four. What I'm getting to is men have very primalistic instincts, and that makes us a very powerful man. Men will do, and y'all can back me up. Men will do a lot of shit. For to fulfill that urge that they need to mate, that they need to re recreate, reproduce, right? Reproduce, gotcha, motherfuckers. Reproduce. Who we got? Reproduce. Procreate. There you go. Procreate. That was it. She's got me. Who was that? Shout out to them. Who is that? Love Hysteria. Thank you so much for the help. Shout out to Love Hysteria. Okay. Men will do crazy shit. For sex, to mate, to fulfill that need. Women, I don't know what it's like to be y'all. Uh, I don't claim that I was born inside of a different body. So I, I pass my card away to say that I understand how women feel, think, and uh, uh, operate. Because I don't. I wasn't born that way. Um, the desire for a man to have sex when he has that desire is something that will now let's put a pin in the word will that will or could affect a person's judgment or rational way of thinking now let's take that pen out that does not give you an excuse to cheat on your fucking spouse that's why we're having this conversation now guys mating right if you so choose that you want to go down the marital route and you commit to a woman that you will marry her and, uh, and you are in the confines of that marriage, stay in the confines of that marriage. If for at any point you feel that you need to go outside of those confines while you are legally married, hey, guess what? If nothing else, pick up a phone and let somebody know that you are fully intentional of not being in that relationship and that you have no desire to be in a romance. You need to end things first. You can't send a text that hasn't been seen, fucking send an email, DM someone, right? Guys, cowards, I look and I watch on social media and I see women I don't want to use the word desperate because that's not good it's not right it's not fitting who are eager 
not for empowerment. An empowered woman is always empowered whether it's acknowledged or not. There are certain women who are on a path for acknowledgement of their power from a man, which then takes all power away from said woman. Now, this is why I was careful when I chose the word men are powerful. Women, you are more powerful. And I want you to understand this, and I mean this. Okay? The desire, right, as a man, as a good man, now I'm saying this, and I'm making a bold proclamation, and I hope everything is fucking recording to hear it. As a good man, that strong sexual desire I have to procreate, and or if nothing else on a physical level, just to have sex, can only be fulfilled by my wife. Without her, or at least without her acknowledgement of whatever, my wife is involved, right? <laughs> my wife is involved in any facet of that. Now, Sleep, again, we talk scientifically. It's, it's physically better for a man to be cuddled up next to his wife in and, and bed at night and, and sleep that way. You, rec you recover better, I'm telling you. Number three, food. My wife makes some banging food, right? Every woman I know makes better food than their husband. I'm just being honest. Uh, unless you're a fucking professional chef, you could throw it down in the kitchen. And then what else did I say? Water? Okay. Easy enough. I've been drinking out of bottled water my entire life. Shit's terrible for you. What did my wife do? She went out and bought like a glass fucking pitcher with a pure filter in it. Women are just better. They are. Guys, we're dumb. We're dumb. It's okay. Say we're dumb. Say we're dumb. Say we do dumb shit, but guess what? That doesn't make you any less powerful. We are dumb in the way of we need women to guide us in the in, again, let's put the pen in the word guide us, guide us, in you need a good woman who is able to harness whatever your energy is, right? Now, you'll find you'll get in relationships and it becomes very difficult for you two to harness each other's energies. One of you may grow while the other doesn't. One of you may degress, while, or you may both may degress together. I don't know. Either way, at some point, you don't know how to harness each other's energy anymore. You begin to fight. Things begin to fall apart. Things fall into disarray. Usually, usually, it comes down to a male versus female thing. You're not respecting me as a man. You don't respect me as a mother. You don't respect me... It's all this male, female, respect, power, control. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back, 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 back. And that's what everyone should do. Really? Ooh, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back. Because guess what? We're pulling our ego into this now. Now it's, you told me I can't, and you said that you could, but I can't. You hear what it is? It's a whole lot of you and me. And all you and me is, is ego spelled different. That's it. That's all it is. If you're struggling right now as a guy, and this is why I said I want to talk to my guys. If you are struggling in your relationship right now, and you have said within the last card is full, we lost the video. So that's all right. We'll just slide the audio. Uh, so that means I'm just talking over here now. Uh, if within the last week, Two weeks, you have said these words. You don't respect me, or you keep disrespecting me, or you continue to um, try to control me, right? If you've said things that sound relatively similar to any of those statements, I want you to listen right now. They do not control you. And you don't control you. Surprise. Nobody controls anybody. We don't control our own lives. I could walk out this fucking door and get hit tomorrow. Yes, I'm recording a podcast currently. You guys are all on it uh, if you're just joining. I could walk out this door and get hit by a bus tomorrow. My All my friends 
and all my family would be talking at my funeral about what a nice guy I am and how hard I worked and how I didn't deserve this. And it always happens to the guys like that. You're getting my point. We don't control anything. Men, you are a powerful, powerful being. What you will do for your why is insane. I've seen dudes sell drugs. I've seen dudes hurt other people. I've seen men work four jobs and not sleep for days. And I've watched men literally join the military and go to war to provide. And I've seen men do heinous, heinous shit, run out on their kids and, and abandon their families and, and beat their spouses. And men are very powerful beings. And I believe that if not harnessed by, I'll just say another energy. For me, it's my wife. I believe that women, specifically, in a male-female relationship, a, a woman is a necessity to a man. You cannot have, I, I believe, you just cannot have a truly... I don't want to say this without making such a bold blanket statement. Um, I don't think you can have a fully balanced man without some sort of steady feminine energy to harness out that whatever. Uh, and the reason I say that, again, guys, like, I've I've been stuck in thought. So if you guys are just joining me, you're you'll have to catch up on the podcast interview. I, I've been very deep in thought this week, and and the reason that the whole male female thing comes up is essentially I've I've just been having to find what am I willing to do to provide as a man. What am I willing to do? I took a fight. Uh, I I will be fighting on November twenty third. My first amateur kickboxing fight. Um, and it was something that I was spending a ton of money on to train. And I realized that I love to train. But I hadn't actually done anything with the training. And I realized that at some point I was kind of becoming a phony. Uh, I, was, I was podcasting and I was talking about MMA and I was living that life. But I really didn't have the credentials to say I made the walk. I did it. And that it was actually providing for my family. Because before a uh, couple, you know, whatever, it wasn't. It, before I made that decision. So I decided that I, as a man, am willing to go in and put it on the line. And do what I gotta do. And win, lose, or draw. I will make sure that they, even if I never make it out of the cage, if I die in the cage, worst case scenario, right? It's highly unlikely. If I die in the cage, I'll make sure my kids know this is what your dad was willing to do as a man to make sure that you were taken care of during hard times. I'm not going to sit here and, and bore you with all my family's problems, but they've been a plenty here recently, right? And that's okay. Because men are a powerful force who, when harnessed properly, I believe by a good woman, are a very dangerous force to be reckoned with. And I think that's what you guys are going to see on November 23rd. Um, so again, the fight will be there. You guys will get to see that. Uh, and I hope that you guys found some insight into this. Guys, get rid of the ego. Women, be patient with your guy. We're simple. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard sometimes. It really is. Uh, let me catch up on questions and comments and everything, and then I will get into uh, the ad reads. Hey there, Instagram. I'm going to be real up and in your shit real quick while I read. Hey, let me wave back at everybody. Doink, doink, doink. Everybody that jumped out of my live is 
is getting all these waves right now in their DM box. And they're like, Duh, I'm over it. That show, though, there she is, Heather in the house. Boom, boom. Boom, I'm waving at everybody. Everyone, give me a minute. Hold on. Damn, a bunch of y'all jumped in. Look, at, I don't even know how I did that. You're watching this. Okay, let, let me get to questions. Procreate. Life is organized chaos, and we are just small ripples in a big ocean, my guy. Frag out ink. That is very true. I agree. If it wasn't for women in the world, guys would be running around acting like fools, still in the Stone Age, beating each other up. I agree with that 100%. I need to be careful when I read these. Some of these might come out of pocket real fast. It's the yin and the yang, and both have a piece of each other on them. Order and chaos. Yes, in them. Love Jordan Peterson talks about yin and yang. Yes, I do too. I do too. I love Jordan Peterson. Yes, good stuff. Very, and that's it. All right, cool. So, guys, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put this back, and we are going to actually jump into the ad reads. The first one is actually uh, we'll just talk about uh, Manscaped, guys. Manscaped. Let me show you. So, for my Instagram people, Manscaped is actually the link in my bio right now. If you're as I throw the box, uh, there you go. Caught being a phony. The razor's in my bathroom. That's just a box. Um, guys, it's the link in my bio. Manscaped is seriously, guys, this trimmer. So the whole point of the trimmer, the whole fucking point of it being called Manscaped is it's specifically for men and it's specifically for your manly area. Women, this is where I need you to earmuff it real quick if you don't want to hear stuff about dudes' body parts, okay? Guys, this trimmer, the lawnmower 2.0, has a special little, you can't, you might be able to see the little white part up here. It's so that way when you're shaving your balls, right? You don't nick them. Because as a guy, if you've ever tried, which I believe you should for hygiene reasons, uh, and just aesthetics, you know, it looks good, feels nice. Um, <laughs> if you've ever tried to shave your balls, you've nicked them. With the lawnmower 2.0, those days are over. So guys, go to Manscaped. It's link. It's one of the links in the bio. Find the Manscaped one. Use code ROAD20. Uh, use... The the man the lawnmower 2.0 is for sure uh the, it's worth it and again guys I have two of them uh, they sent me two of them so I use one on my beard which it's a half inch guard so you can perfectly trim your beard you can literally just whack the little extra long dead frayed hairs off it's perfect guys go over to Manscape use code Road Twenty. Support me by showing them um, that this channel does support um, their host and the person that you just spent however much time <laughs> listening to me talk. Uh, please go over there, support them. Also, guys, Nutrafit, Nutrafit Labs has been a huge supporter of ours. Guys, all their products are to die for. Their new Peach Mango Thermofit is the shit. If you are looking to sweat, now, I don't recommend thermogenics. I don't. So I'm being upfront with that in the beginning. I don't, but if you want a good sweat, that's not going to make you jittery, anxious, whatever. Thermofit's where it's at. Um, their Carnage pre-workout. It says high stem. I'm very um, sensitive to high stem stuff. I had no problem with it. I have had um, other people that say yes, that one's a lot. So they use their um, new uh, pre-fit. Which is, that one is where if you're a STEM problem, get the pre-fit over at Nutrafit. You guys can use code REDEMPTION over at Nutrafit Labs and check them out. I want to just give a very quick shout out to all my, uh, the, the people who I can't name and you guys can't go find. So I have people here in my community who have sponsored me for my fight. Smoker's Choice is just, a, it's a little tobacco store that I go and I literally buy my wraps for my CBD and stuff. And he, he decided to sponsor me for my fight. I love them. Guys, the shirt I'm wearing, BC Limited, if you've seen it, go over, check them out. You've for sure seen it in my stories. Um, where I don't have a code for them. Just go support Heather and Brian. Guys, they're seriously, they're the best. Um, I, I've got, I think I told you in the last podcast. They've supported me since day one. And it just means a lot. Emerald City CBD, same thing, guys. Bethany and I became friends, actually, over social media. Uh, she's the owner, and she's one of the coolest individuals who is so unapologetically herself. Uh, when you walk in Bethany's office, she, you'll probably see dead armadillos and other animals and, and animals in jars and things. 
it, she is 100% her, and in my eyes, she's 100% awesome, and she has no house brand of CBD. So when you walk into the store or when you go onto the website, Emerald City CBD, you can get whatever your favorite CBD product is. And if you have a question, you can always ask me. You can ask Bethany. Go over, guys. If nothing else, follow Emerald City CBD and just find out where your boy gets all his CBD at. There you go. It's very easy. Uh, and then we have a Havana, uh, which actually is on here. Um, the yoga studio here in town. They've decided to sponsor me, which I will be going over there and doing some hot yoga. You see your boy go over there and ha ha find my balance with all this crazy. You guys see I got a, a brace on the knee, so I need to go stretch it out a little bit. And then uh, I want to I wanna get into my bookie, guys. My bookie, we are full freaking swing and after the my bookie read i'm going to talk about the ufc card the one that just happened at 8 a.m on a fucking saturday uh and then the one that we got coming up next so my bookie it's hard to believe but football season is back notre dame's playing tonight motherfuckers the nfl preseason nope already done that means it's time to make an account uh the best online sports book known to man that's right talking about my bookie you guys have been here you've seen it you know who i'm talking about sports betting is exploding in popularity mainly because it just became legal if you want to get in on the action with a trusted company that's been in business for years my bookie.ag is the place for you with no issue or i'm sorry with an easy no hassle mobile site 24 7 customer service which is true uh their online customer service is the shit and those guys help me use the bitcoin thing to deposit all the time they're very helpful and bets on every sport and prop imaginable. What's a prop, guys? So a prop is when you bet on, say, like the Notre Dame game. I could bet a prop, which is, imagine it being an extra thing. I could bet that they'll be up by 14 points in the second quarter. It's A prop is a very specific thing, right? There you go. That's a prop. Uh, every sport and prop imaginable. Now, they have some props that are like separate bets. You can bet on a prop being... Uh, who will win the Republican uh, nomination? Who will win the Democratic? That is a separate prop, which is a separate game. My bookie provides a fun, safe betting experience, which is also true. It's very surprise, um, secure. Maybe you think Drew Brees and the Saints get their revenge for the terrible blown call in last year's NFC Championship. Don't bring it up. Or maybe you think Tom Brady and the Patriots win an unbelievable seventh Super Bowl. Of course, it's rigged. Why not make money? It's not rigged. I'm just kidding. Why not make money when your predictions come true? And if deposit, and if you deposit today, my bookie will give you fifty percent deposit bonus. That's right. You put in a hundred bucks, and they'll give you fifty. You put in a thousand, they'll give you five hundred. It's that easy. Football weekends are the best, but they're even more thrilling when every touchdown can win you more money. So go to mybookie.ag and sign up today with promo code Redemption at my bookie. You play, you win. You get paid. Now, the MMA show. These motherfuckers right here, right? The MMA show, they have Jessica Andrade fighting in China at 8 a.m. Nobody knew when this fight was. Nobody knew who the fuck this lady was because she fought one time prior in the UFC. And it was recently, and I can't remember who she fought. So, somebody, if you know, tell me. And she slaughtered Jessica Andrade. What is it, 45 seconds? Knocked her out by TKO? Here's what happened. Mark me on this, okay? Here's what I'm saying. I'm going on the record. They have the big fight between Colby Covington and Robbie Lawler. Colby Covington reigns victorious and is all about Trump. and his, uh, That's his whole thing. He wants to shout out the Trumps, right? Then he goes on this media frenzy for Trump. Then what happens? Then we've got the big, the whole time, there's a lead-up coming to Habib and Dustin Poirier, which we'll talk about, which is going to happen where? In Russia. So, Trump's biggest fan is all over gaining national attention to the UFC, right? He has to gain all of America's attention to the UFC. Then a couple weeks later, they go and fight where? In China. What's happening in China right now? All kinds of crazy shit is happening in China. What would be real cool? If America and China could figure out a way to stay buddies. How do they do that? Let's make each other a bunch of money. Here's what you do. You take a champion who, let's be honest, people don't really give a fuck about Jessica Andrade. People were really bummed out when she dropped Rose Namajunas on her head. 
Uh, so you take a champion that nobody really cares about. You send her over there to get mauled by a savage because they're in China. So they don't have the same internet we have, right? So they can't watch their opponents and their opponents can't watch them. So you really don't have a way to study your opponent in that situation. They sent a unliked, unmarketable champion because she's just kind of, I don't know. She's just kind of bland. Just going to drop. Send her over there. She gets beat. Now what happens? Relations between China and the U.S. are better than they've ever been. Right before what? A fucking election coming up in November. But before the election, coming up next weekend, the biggest fight probably um, uh, in Russia is the out is in Abu Dhabi, and it's Khabib Nurmagomedov, their superstar, against Dustin Poirier, an American. It just all seems too sketchy to me. It all seems too politically charged for me. Uh, the fight fucking blew, and that card sucked. Now, here's the thing. I fully believe Dustin Poirier is going to win this fight at UFC 242. I am standing with the diamond. Dustin Poirier, all day, I'm calling it. Guys, that, my friends, is the Road to Redemption podcast. Go check out our friends over at Tasty Clean. Go check out our friends over at Team Room Designs. Uh, these are a couple other sponsors who picked me up uh, for the fight. Title Boxing Club. Henzo Gracie here in Clarksville, Tennessee. If you guys are here in Clarksville and you want a place to roll jiu-jitsu, Henzo Gracie's. Uh, Wild Side is, a, is another place that I will roll at from time to time. Uh, and yeah, just guys, keep an eye out on the Instagram. I'm always putting my sponsors up there. When you see them, please support them. Uh, it means a lot to me, and again, it helps also support me. If you guys are not subscribed to the podcast, maybe you don't even know what a podcast is. Uh, I don't know how you'd be listening to it, but for my people that are watching me on Instagram, if you don't know what a podcast is, you can go, if you have an iPhone, you probably even have it downloaded already. It's an app called Podcasts. You can go to that search bar, type in the word road, R-O-A-D, the number two, Redemption Podcast, and you will see a face that looks like this, mine. Uh, I will be either with a big beard up against a brick wall, or I will be holding a fence with a shorter beard like I have now. Surprise, surprise. I don't know. It <laughs> depends on what platform you find me on. On YouTube, type in Cam Williamson Official. That's me. And if you guys ever want to write me, just go to my DM box like everybody else. Uh, I don't have Snapchat. I don't use TikTok because I think they're silly. And, uh, yeah, my Facebook is a direct reflection of my Instagram, so I wouldn't waste my time if I were you. All right, guys. Peace, love, and uh, go Irish. Go fucking Irish. I'll talk to you guys next week. See ya.